Joining us now for some perspective is human rights lawyer and founding dean of the De La Salle University College of Law. He was also one of the key prosecutors during the impeachment trial of former President Joseph Estrada, Jose Manuel Chell Jokno. Hi, Maria. Chell, tell me, what do you make of these proceedings so far? Well, you know, I'm looking at the proceedings from a different perspective because I've been doing trial work for over 20 years and I was involved in two of the previous impeachments and frankly I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed at the way the lawyers are handling their cases and even in some respects with the senator judges because a lot of the, you know, the, the waste of time in terms of the marking of documents and all of that, that could have been dispensed with if they had had pre-trial early on. Why didn't they have pre-trial? I don't understand myself. That was one of the questions I had because a pre-trial really would have made everything much faster yeah. and simpler. All the witnesses could then be laid out, all the exhibits and documents could be marked so that in the actual trial you can go straight to calling the witness and asking them questions. It seems right now it's unclear what the rules are, is that correct? Even the nature of the proceedings is something that's not quite clear. So what exactly is the main goal? I mean, what's the main goal of all these impeachments? Of course, the main goal of impeachment is really to determine if a, an official, a high official, is fit for office, and if not, to remove him or her. But beyond that, it also involves the question of public accountability. So there are deeper issues than simply one official, but rather, how is our, our country moving? How is the judicial system in particular? How is that? Uh, working. Yeah. And as the Chief Justice, there are certain responsibilities that only he has in the entire country and even in the court. And there should be some accountability for that. Yeah. How should this have been handled? You said you were disappointed in the Senators. How, how, what could the Senate have done better? From the very beginning, the Senators could have called the lawyers to a conference. They didn't even have to do that as a public hearing. They could have done it uh, what we call in chambers and told them, submit to us your list of witnesses, submit your documents, let's mark everything, let's decide on the issues, let's decide on the sequence of presentation of evidence, and on the side of the defense, if you have any objections that are technical or evidentiary, raise it now, and we can already work on them now before the actual trial. Because, you know, in a, in a trial, objections tend to take up a lot of time on the court. And, of course, the public uh, gets impatient wondering what these objections yeah. are all about. The question today seems to be how legal, how legalistic, how judicial should these proceedings be? The senators, I think, are in a quandary because even the legal experts aren't sure how to categorize an impeachment proceeding. It's supposed to be somewhere between, similar in some respects to a criminal case, but similar in other respects to an administrative case. Because, of course, in a criminal case, if you're convicted, you go to jail. But in an impeachment proceeding, if you're convicted, you just lose your office. So in that respect, it's really closer to an administrative proceeding. However, because it involves a high official, uh, there are certain rights that must be given to that person. For example, the right to due process of the law, the right against self-incrimination, the right to confront witnesses and cross-examine them. This would be guaranteed even in an administrative case. Um. Senator Miriam Santiago talked about, uh, in terms of evidence, taking the, uh, an obvious preponderance of evidence. Do you agree with this? No, I don't. I think that the standard should be closer to substantial evidence rather than a Can preponderance Can you explain that? Evidence. What does that mean? Okay. There are three basic, what we call, quantums of proof in, in any kind of legal proceeding. In court, you have, for criminal cases, proof beyond reasonable doubt. In civil cases, what we call preponderance of evidence. Or let's say, to simplify it, 51% in your favor and you can already win a civil case. In administrative cases, the rule is that all you need to remove a person from office is substantial evidence. Evidence that a reasonable mind might accept as true. And as long as you meet that standard, which is the easiest standard, then you can now uh, hold that person liable. Why are they different? Well, in a criminal case, if you lose, you go to jail, or if yeah. there's a death penalty, you lose your life. Yeah. Therefore, you should have the highest standard of proof. Yeah. In a civil case, that involves most of the time property, and money, and life, you know, stuff like that, and that also requires a higher standard of proof. 
But when you talk about public office, um, public office is a public trust. And so it's not just yourself you're working for when you're in the government, but you're working for the people. So there should be, uh, to me, a more relaxed approach to looking at, at this issue. So given that something this basic hasn't even been decided yet, what have the prosecution and defense been doing in the last week? <laughs> I'm not sure myself. Um, of course, they have been preparing as best as they can, given that there is not a very clear picture of what the rules are. And that really makes it hard for them. Uh, the prosecutors, the public prosecutors especially, don't have much trial experience. That is already a disadvantage. But at least in a trial in court, you know what the rules are. Now in the impeachment court, it can change from day to day. And without any kind of pre-trial before the trial, there's no way for the lawyers to predict what rules are now going to be followed and what rules aren't. Why, I guess now, moving from the actual court itself, there's a role for both the public and media in this. What do you see us doing in a situation, in an impeachment hearing? What's well, I think your, your job is really to deliver what is happening uh, to the people as directly as possible. The, the problem, for instance, when the media cover a court case is that most of the time you cannot cover it live. So it is through the commentary of the journalists and, and the reporters that the public gets to know what's happening. But many of our reporters and journalists have no legal background. So when I watch the news, sometimes I wonder why they emphasize certain points when to me that's not the important part, part of the case. But the impeachment trial has no such ban. And so to me, just like during the Arab impeachment, uh, the media served a very, very strong educative function because not many people are aware of what happens in court, what is a court proceeding, what's hearsay, you know, what's evidence, or even now what's a statement of assets and liabilities. What we've seen in the past week is that both sides seem to be playing to the media, to the public. How would you characterize what they've done so far? I'm not sure. If, uh, yes, in, in that sense, both sides have been, have been pandering to the, to the public. But in terms of their strategies in court, they have taken different approaches. The defense has taken um, a more legalistic, technical approach, which may backfire on them if they keep on that tactic, especially as far as public opinion is concerned. The prosecution, of course, has taken a more um, you know, liberal, they've been advocating that you know, this is not a criminal trial, we should relax the rules, which is to their advantage. Their problem, to me, really is a, a lack of experience in this kind of work. You can't learn to conduct a trial overnight. It takes years and years of experience, you know, lots of good and bad experiences in court, weird judges, corrupt judges. You've encountered all kinds of people in court. Then you gain the stock knowledge to, to argue that way in an impeachment trial. And that is where uh, Cuevas has a very big advantage. Well, thank you so much, Chell, sure. for joining us tonight. Um, we'll come back to you in the coming days.